God wants you to prosper, not somebody else, not someone down the street, but he wants you to prosper. He promises to be our exceeding great reward. God has a great plan for you. Third John, verse two, it says, beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Well, hello, hello, hello. I'm Dr. Shante Haynes again with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. And it truly is my pleasure today to introduce you to Katina Horton. This is an author extraordinaire, but I'm going to let her introduce herself and tell you a little bit more about her. Katina, why don't you introduce yourself to my audience? And I wear many hats, I would like to say. I'm an author, a motivational speaker. Okay, I'm a coach. And then I am a computer technician. So I wear a lot of different hats. And then I'm also an online course creator. And with coaching, uh, what I do is that I help women to reclaim uh, their power and identity so that they will know they are enough. And so these are women that find themselves in difficult relationships. It can be romantic relationships. Uh, relationships at work, relationships, you know, at home with their family, ministry partners, you know, relationships with sisters and brothers at Christ, at church, any and all type of difficult relationships. I help them to uh, reclaim their power and identity. And then we work on uh, breaking unhealthy relationship patterns, uh, building resilience and flourishing. And then lastly, uh, creating an empowered new chapter of life. Oh, I love it. See, Katina and I kind of connected on the same level of we want to make sure that we empower women, recognizing that the spiritual foundation is oh so important. But Katina does a great job. And I want to suggest to my audience also that you go check her out, the Valley of Grace podcast. So I'm going to put a plug in it. Make, I'm going to make sure it's in the show notes as well. And you'll see this on YouTube. So go there. Check what she has there as well, because it's all about us empowering you. So, yes. but Katina, I wanted to ask you too about some of the books that you have. She is a nine time author, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you want to get in on some of these books. I know she has The Journey, which is her memoir. So that's one thing that you can look at, but she also has some other ones. I am looking at the one that she's called Digging Deep Down in the Root. So Katina, tell us a little bit about Digging Deep Down in the Roots. Okay, so Digging Deep Down in Those Roots, it is a uh, poetry book, book for Black women. And in that particular book, yeah, I help women, Black women, that is to reclaim their worth and their identity as Black women because we go around and we put on about a good 50, 60 masks a day. Mm -hmm. And we hide in the shadows, you know, and a lot of this majority of it, I would say it stems back from way over 400 years ago mm -hmm. when slavery existed. You know, we had to hide in the shadows. We had to uh, suppress our emotions, you mm -hmm. know, because if we were able, you know, we showed how we really felt that could mean death for us, death for the spouse, you know, and even on the, the auctioning block, so to speak, you know, you could not let on how you were really feeling, mm -hmm. you know, and so in digging deep down in those roots, it helps you to go back. You know, we don't like to talk about slavery. It doesn't make us feel good. It was not a good thing that happened, but we cannot move forward. You know, the scripture says, and we shall know the truth and the truth shall set us free. Yes. We cannot be set free unless we deal with the truth behind a lot of the stereotypes and a lot of the truth of slavery in general. Like I said, even when it comes down to um, suppressing emotions as a people, you know, we feel like you know, we were talking about stereotypes and that type of different thing. When you think about like we're black women and you have the stereotype where um, you got the strong black woman mm -hmm. where we 
uh, you know, we're so strong, we can do anything, you know, and uh, we've got the, uh, the black superwoman where we're running around with the cape on flying, like we're the energizer bunnies as if we can just keep going and going without having any type of rest. You know, uh, we have our emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual needs. We have that of our kids. And then we try to take on all of it, everybody else's. And the scripture does say, bear ye one another's burdens. That's what we're supposed to do, mm -hmm. you know, but we take that as black women, we put that cape on and we turn the bear ye one another's burdens into like a whole nother level where we neglect to take care of ourselves because we look back over history. We saw, you know, our grandmother doing whatever, you know, and mm -hmm. my grandmother, we call her a uh, Madea. So we would oh, see- I had a Madea too. Oh. Madea too. Really? Yes, we loved us some Madea. So we would see her, you know, you see Madea in the kitchen cooking and cleaning everything. And um, the fact that she didn't need help, you know, and it probably stemmed back from even like with her mother and before that and before that. And so we just feel like we got to do any anything and everything without help. You know, even after having a baby, okay, I'm going to have a baby in three, four weeks, I'm going to go back to work knowing you have to take the time to heal. So yeah. in, in digging deep down in those roots, it's like when you think about roots, the roots represent the truth, okay? Mm -hmm. And then when you're on the top of the surface, like when you're working outside of your garden, when you're on the surface, that's what it is, it's the surface, it's the comfort zone. Mm -hmm. But the roots down there, that represents the work and the process and the truth that's down there that we don't want to get to. You see what I'm saying? We're afraid yeah. to go down there because you know how we say, you know, especially as black women, ain't nobody got time for that. We don't have time for it, but we will when it comes, you know, you can only suppress so long. You see what I'm saying? So uh, in the book, it helps you to go there, you know, in the poetic form to be able to go there and to deal with truths and things that make you uncomfortable. You know, and I had a few uh, poems that I did at a spoken word type of poetry event. And it was, uh, the audience was very diverse. And you know, some things, you know, you're wondering, like, I wonder if this is going to go well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you just don't know, you know, and you have mixed expressions on the faces. And uh, then I had one person that mentioned, she said, well, there's a, a lot of truth in it. You know, she said, it's like true humor, in, in an artful form to it. And mm -hmm. I tried, you know, that's exactly what my, uh, <laughs> my intentions were to not to have it real heavy, but mm -hmm. to be truthful. You know, we, we can't go, we can't move forward without dealing with that truth. You know what I'm saying? I love even, it. Yes, without dealing with that. And uh, it goes into some issues of dealing with black hair, the things that we don't talk about. You know, and we feel, you know, sometimes we can feel as black women because as like I said, a lot of this starts back from slavery. Mm -hmm. I am not worthy enough to discuss the issues that I have with my hair. You know, but who made us think that we're, we're unworthy to have problems with our hair or, you know what I'm saying? Having a bad hair day. Right. We can too. You know, we, we're worthy of being able to discuss those things. So I dig into some, like I said, some of that, you know, some of what it feels like to live on the South side of Chicago, to live on the low end, as we call it, you know, the area that I uh, initially grew up in and just um, having community and just some of the hardships of life. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I know what you mean. We don't all, we don't grow up with this, I would say with a silver spoon in our mouth. Exactly. Some, people, some people will say we don't even have the spoon so right. you <laughs> we go. grow up um sometimes with the poverty mindset but we grow up with the mindset that was given to us by our parents or our ancestors and we don't want to deal with it because we do want to sweep it under the rug so it sounds like you brought it out in such a wonderful form like you said an art form but dealing with the issue adding some humor in there it sounds yes. like it is absolutely awesome. I can't wait. And then you say you have nine other books. So I'm going to make sure that I drop in the show notes all of the books that Katina Horton has. 
I want you to go check them out, see what she has. They, where are they available, Katina? Sure. If you go to thevalleyofgrace.com mm -hmm. and I've got a, a section there you click on for books, if you click on that tab and then each of the books are there and then I've got where it says buy the book and it'll take them straight to uh, the book on Amazon. All right. Yes. Excellent. Excellent. Well, we definitely want to be supporting you. And I had an interview with Katina earlier. She asked me a whole lot of questions and I probably <laughs> should ask her a lot of the same ones too, but I'm going to just ask because mm -hmm. I know you have a coaching business as well. And I right. know that you're helping specific women. Why don't you tell us uh, what your particular program is really geared toward and who you really are looking for to help right now? Okay. So my program, my coaching program are, uh, is dealing with women who are in any type of difficult relationships, okay? And those women, they've lost their power, okay? They've given it away, feel that they don't have any rather because the power is already within us. Mm -hmm. They don't realize that they have a choice. You see what I'm saying? So they okay. think they're powerless and they've lost their identity in these relationships, and like I said, they're not all romantic relationships. However, the majority of them are. The majority of the relationships that they've lost their identity in is romantic relationships. And it's because they've been in a toxic relationship. Mm. You know, and um, these toxic relationships, they can be home, church, work, school, you know, whatever university they've gone to, you know, you name it, they can have it. And what tends to happen is um, it gets to the point in these relationships where they are just thinking, the woman is thinking, man, if I could just find a man that's going to provide my needs, you know what I'm saying? I just got to find one that's good enough because, you know, I don't know what's going on, but I just go, keep going from one broken relationship to the next. Mm -hmm. But they are not realizing that that is not the problem. You see what I'm saying? They are playing the role of the woman is that is in, in this toxic relationship. The woman as the wounded person is playing the role as fix it slash the control slash change, you know, fix the other person so I can change, you know, change the other person, fix the relationship, control what ends up happening when they don't realize that in essence, there's very little that we can control. And I always call it the be still and no moment because once you stop the toxic dance, that's when you can get the clarity, but you can't get the clarity if you still trying to stay up and burn the midnight oil. You know, you figure, you know, you think to yourself, cause I was once, once there myself and you stand, you know, you stand up burning the midnight oil, like, you know, I just got to find the right formula. I haven't figured it out yet. I got to find the perfect formula in order to keep this relationship going. So this person will stay with me. But there, you know what I'm saying? And it stems from the women, uh, like I said, them trying to have control over the relationship instead of releasing that control to God and not knowing that the rest of everything will fall into place upon them releasing and having that be still in no moment to get the clarity that they need so that they can be able to uh, move forward. And a lot of the women, the reason why they end up being in a relationship in the first place is because they have issues with not being enough. Somebody told them along the way in their childhood, you are not enough. And so they've been wearing that banner, like when you're in a beauty pageant, you got Miss America, Miss Universe. They've been wearing the banner, I am not enough. Wow. Ever since then. And sometimes we wear three and four banners. I am not enough. I am not pretty enough. You know, I am not light enough. I am not smart enough. And wow. so whoever put whatever in their minds, they've internalized it. And that sets the stage for them to hook up with someone who in their brokenness, in this toxic relationship, this toxic individual, they are trying everything they can to make that person stay in their not enoughness. Mm. So you're looking to the other person, you're looking to the man to provide that enoughness that you don't have. 
but they're trying everything in their power and brokenness to make sure that you don't get to the level. You see what I'm saying? You try yes. to give them something you don't have and then they're trying to make sure you don't get it. So right, and they're taking situation. advantage of the situation. Like, taking advantage of the situation. So every broken area in you is being exploited by every broken area in them. Wow. So it just creates this like toxic dance cycle where you're trying to get your needs met you know, you end up being in a state of languishing. You're trying to get your needs met. They're running away from you. You're running after, then they're running. You just keep running. But until, mm -hmm. like I said, you stop and have the be still in no slash come to Jesus moment, you can't get any clarity about anything because you're just working round the clock, wow. trying to figure out how to save the relationship, how to fix that person. You know, it reminds me of a couple of different things. One, our words do have power. Yes. And the Bible says the power of life and death is in the tongue. We typically right. take it from the standpoint of I can speak and declare over my life what I'm looking for. And I can't. Yes. Yes. But when you go back to the Ten Commandments and you said, thou shalt not kill, we kill people's dreams. We kill their spirits. We do all of that because words are containers of power. And yes. I would always say it when I talk with the youth uh, in youth ministry to the parent, you don't speak over a child's life. You're never going to amount to anything. You're just like your dad. Those type of things hurt and they go deep. And so I'm glad that you're bringing some of those things out to the surface because until they're dealt with, like you said, you can't just keep sweeping it under the rug. You've got to deal with it. And if you and you found a way to deal with it with some humor, but really getting to that point, I love that. And it sounds like your coaching program does some of the similar things. So I'm going to yes. ask, what would be your big takeaways, your big nuggets that you would like to leave with the audience as it relates to that power and being able to then retain that power and taking it back? Okay, so some of my nuggets, uh, number one, I would say you've got to heal. And a lot of times we try to go around it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We try to avoid it. And when I think about healing, I think about it as being under construction. So you've got to go under construction. When it's construction outside, mm -hmm. we've got to drive that construction route. So when you go to he do healing, you've got to go through that construction route. You can't go around it. Because around it could lead you back home. <laughs> right. And that's not where you're trying to go when you left from home already. You see yeah. what I'm saying? So in order for you to get from point A to point Z, where you want to go, you have got to heal. And then number two is once you heal, then you can ground yourself in your identity in Christ. You see what I'm saying? It's hard for you to ground yourself in knowing that I am God's child. Okay. I am his princess. I am his daughter when you have not healed. Because a lot of this could be things that happen a lot of times, nine times out of 10, even though it could be another relative, but nine times out of 10, it's your mother or your father. And so a lot of times we'll take that and then we'll put it on mm -hmm. and compare that to how God is. You see what I'm saying? Yes. So number two is, you know, like I said, we're grounding ourselves in our identity in Christ. Once we are grounded in our identity as his child, because we were adopted, God adopted us as the sons and daughters mm -hmm. because of Jesus's death on the cross. So when we're grounded identity then becomes number three, where we know our worth. We know that we have value. You see what I'm saying? Yes. Because of number two, our identity in Christ. We know we have value. We're part of royalty. Yes. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We are part of that royal kingdom and we've already been, I always like to say, pre-qualified. When you get a letter in the mail, they put a key in there and they say you've been pre-qualified for your karma. So we've already been pre-qualified. Jesus' death has already pre-qualified us as being worthy, okay? I love and it. then number four, when we know our worth, we go and protect it at all costs. And that protection is us setting up boundaries. 
Yes. You see what I'm saying? Like we got the royal family. We talk about the royal family. We identify them. We know they have value slash worth. And the third thing is they have bodyguards to protect that value, right? Yes. So then once we know who we are, after healing, we know who we are. We know what we're worth. And number three, we're setting up boundaries to protect that at all costs. You know, we know I deserve more than this. You see what I'm saying? Because of Jesus' blood blood on the cross, I am already enough. I have that birthright. I've got, I'm pre-qualified with those keys to the kingdom. And so um, we just, the women has, they've got to know within themselves, it's all up to choice. And even they think, well, you know, they're powerless, not making a choice is still making a choice. You know, those are the two options. We're making a choice or we're not making a choice. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. And even, uh, like I said, we, we can just take, even if it's just teeny weeny baby steps, but they, you know, you, you can reclaim your power and identity. They can know beyond a shadow of the doubt, the women that are listening, that they are enough. Yes. Yes. I love it. Don't let the blood spill that Jesus spilled for you just go to waste. Don't yes. let that. Yes. There's yes. too much power right there. So I love what yes. you said. And I like to summarize for my audience as well, because I always say I help them put feet to their faith so that they can walk victoriously. It's all about transformative, biblically-based truth here. So just summary, there are too many wounded healers. So you got to heal yourself. You will stay in this dance if you don't heal. But secondly, she said, you got to have that identity basis. You need to know who you are and who you belong to. And when you do that, you now know that you are worthy because God calls you a gem. He calls you a jewel. He says you are a treasure. We have these treasures in earthen vessels. You are God's treasure, his handiwork, his masterpiece. So once you get that and you know that you are, you got your worth in place, then you can keep moving forward. Retain your power because you are a powerful woman of God. You can do what he's called you to do. It's short change, no way, no how. That's not even part of the game. So Katina, I am excited about what you're bringing. Is there a title to your program? Yes, it is the VG5 coaching framework program and so vg stands for valley of grace okay (laughs) the vg5 program and i'm going to make sure that we put the links in as well go ahead for my podcast audience tell us verbally how they can get in touch is it the valleyofgrace.com is that the best place to find you yes they can go to the valleyofgrace.com and that's all one word Mm -hmm. Uh, They can also email me, Katina Horton at thevalleyofgrace.com. And that's all one word. Okay. And they can also find me out on Instagram. And that's at T like Tom Horton. So it looks like Thornton 4792. So at Thornton 4792 for uh, Instagram. All right. I love it. I'm going to make sure Mm -hmm. all of that's there. And as I post this on social media, Know that those social media sites are going to be there as well, too. Katina, I wish you the best of luck on all of the books that you have. Keep writing. That is so important. There's so many of us as authors, and I don't know your author journey, but as Mm -hmm. we are authors, we have a message that we want to get out to the audience. It's not that we're writing just for ourselves. It, you know, and most of my audience, you know. I've got several books on finances and they're out there for you. It's not helping me because I've already learned it. I want to make sure that you are empowered to be able to move forward. And Katina, you're doing some of the similar things. So if you see an author that has a book out there, go ahead and purchase it. She's got a message to tell you. And that message is to empower you, impact you, and to keep moving you forward. I am yes. so excited. And because it is spiritually based, I'm loving it even the more because we <laughs> need God every yes. single day of our lives. I am Amen. so thankful, Katina. Thank you so much for sharing this time with me. Any last words that you would like to say? Anything that I missed? Let me think. Is there anything I would like to say? You know, I just want to tell the audience that you are enough. 
grab your keys. Don't leave them at home. Okay. Oh. Just like when you need the keys to the car to start up and leave out your driveway every day, pick up your key and start moving. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, thank you so much. Again, I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. It truly has been my pleasure. Continue to put feet to your faith and walk victoriously. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. Hi, thanks for listening and watching. And if you enjoyed what you've seen, make sure you subscribe, like, and share. And hit that notification button so you'll know the next time there's a new episode. Listen, as a result of my coaching program, my clients have experienced a calming of the emotional roller coaster. They have a compelling future as well as the confidence and the know-how to achieve it. And they have clarity on the financial tools that they need in order to live life on their terms and save tens of thousands of dollars. I'm looking for women who are devastated by the double Ds, divorce or debt, who want to gain confidence to live life on their terms with peace and financial security. My question is, who do you know? Have them go ahead and book a call with me so that we can get to that compelling future. My heart may be broke, but your bank account doesn't have to be. You can find us online at h, the number two, htruth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.